Alright, this is one of the more important videos that's probably going to be on this channel, which is an interesting thing to say considering the amount of content I've put out over the years. This book is a must read. You can't not read this book when you know that this book is out there. And hopefully if you have not read this book, uh, watching this video will satiate you um, to the point that you, you, you just cannot live without this book. Like it will drive you to salivate. Yeah, I don't think satiate was the right word for that. Ha! <laughs> but it will, it will definitely make you go get this book in any way you possibly can. Um, it's going to change your life and perspective, which any good book should do, but this book does it on a whole other level. Um, if I were to, if I were asked to, you know, have one book, you know, of radical feminist literature, this would be the book I would keep. If I were to, I don't know, recommend that, if I were to give someone, you know, a radical feminist book and they could only have one, this would be it. Even though there are books out there that are way more radical, you know, that I've read, even other books by Mary Daly, it is, everything that happens in the book is so powerful and so transformative. And I recommend this book, like, you know, in person to women who aren't feminists all the time. Women who have no interest in radical feminism, women who may be married, women who may be mothers of sons, and yeah, you know, I just recommend it to every woman because I see the power this book has to any woman who would get it. Like, what I got out of it, I get from like a maybe different perspective, but I can see any woman being empowered from reading this book. So, like, there's just something you're going to get out of it. Um, yeah, uh, and I want to say, like, going into this, like, as it was very obvious to me, the, even the first time I read this book, I've read it a few times now, it's very obvious to me that Mary Daly uh, is a witch, just from reading it, she, the book, and that the book is a spell that she's cast. <clears throat> I will say that as well. This book is a spell. Um, and uh, to kind of explain that, if you don't really understand what I mean, I watched a video, and I'll put a link in the low bar to it, actually, just because I'm bringing it up, of, I think it was Alan Moore. It's the guy who wrote V for Vendetta. I think his name is Alan Moore. Um, and he's a magician, but, um, like a lot of writers are, you know, because they're connected. But, uh, he speaks of how, you know, in antiquity, the worst, you wouldn't fear a wizard as much as you would fear, like, a bard or somebody who had the power to write. Because they then had the power to completely transform your reputation. The writer has the power to damage you in the eyes of not only your friends and family, but even of yourself. Like, they can make you ridiculous unto yourself. And Mary Daly is really working with the power of writing, and uh, you definitely see that. And also, like, in magic, like, the gods who... I don't want to say in magic. You don't have to work with gods to practice magic. Everyone does. Uh, do magic that is but in in paganism I should say let's let's say that in, in the pagan tradition the gods who are in charge of magic like say Hermes or Mercury and uh, in the Egyptian tradition Thoth like these gods are the scribes of the gods they are the messengers they're the ones who write down and record information. Those gods are the ones who are in charge of magic. So you can see just how important, and she definitely got it, like she definitely got this concept down, that to write a book is to cast a spell, and that is definitely what she did. Uh, e even when I, when I first read it, I wasn't like on my spiritual path like I am now, but I 
definitely could feel the working on me and the permeating of like my psychic body that was happening. Like she definitely was helping me to bring stuff out of the, the surface and to fight it. Like, um, what this book is about in a lot of ways is getting the patriarchal demons out of your head, out of your body, out of your mind and facing them and destroying them. That is what she is doing. It is a very, very powerful spell she casts. So don't listen to this with any trepidation if you're not like into this stuff at all. You don't have to view it this way, but for me, that is like what is going on 100%. I make no apologies for believing this. It is what is happening. Um, actually, I'm going to read to you the beginning passage just to give you an idea of how she works the language. Um, and even the title, gynecology. She splits this word that is a word for the patriarchal medical practice of, um, you know, male understanding of the female reproductive system. She takes that word and she makes it woman focused and life affirming. The study of womankind. Like, whoa! The meta ethics of radical feminism. I mean, that is, whoo! That is powerful wordsmithing. So yeah, um, this is the beginning passage from the introduction. This book is about the journey of women becoming. That is radical feminism. The voyage is described and roughly charted here. I say quote unquote roughly by way of understatement and pun. We do not know exactly what is on the other side until we arrive there. And the journey is rough. The charting done here is based on some knowledge from the past, upon present experience, and upon hopes for the future. These three sources are inseparable, intertwined. Radical feminist consciousness spirals in all directions, discovering the past, creating slash disclosing the present future. The radical being of women is very much an other world journey. It is both discovery and creation of a world other than patriarchy. Patriarchy appears to be quote unquote everywhere. Even outer space and the future have been colonized. As a rule, even the more imaginative science fiction writers, allegedly the most foretelling futurists, cannot slash will not create a space and time in which women get far beyond the role of a space stewardess. Nor does this colonization exist simply quote unquote outside women's minds, securely fastened into institutions we can physically leave behind. Rather, it is also internalized, festering inside women's heads, even feminist heads. One of the reasons why I think this book also should be read by women who are interested in magic, whether they're um, novices or adept, like it doesn't really matter if you haven't read it, you should. So much of, so much of what will trip someone up in terms of their practice and in terms of like advancing to other levels and manifesting the type of life that they actually want to have, creating the type of life that they want, is limiting beliefs. Um, now, that's a word that's thrown around a lot. I even have a video titled it, and it can mean a lot of things. Like, it can trip you up in all manner of your life. But specifically, what happens to women so much, and... Again, I want to put radical feminism in the context of witchcraft here because it is a form of witchcraft and this book will help you see how. When you understand this, you're going to understand just how like Mary Daly is like training you to fight on a completely different playing field than we had been previously. Um right, the she shows you specifically how to take the belief systems, like the male belief systems, and completely turn them around and 
find them, you know, when they're hidden a lot of times. <clears throat> um, often through the process of what she calls reversing the reversals. Like, so much of our reality that we live in is a reversal of reality. Um, I'm trying to think of an example right now. <laughs> um, well, I mean, here's a reversal for you. Uh, when you look at, let's say a show like South Park, it's rated mature, right? Now, is that mature content? Is that adult content? Is that the content of somebody with a level of maturity? Or is it asinine and the content that somebody who has the mind of a child would find entertaining? Right? You see, that is a reversal. So much of our reality is steeped in these reversals. Um, why did that one come to mind? I don't know. Um, <clears throat> But yeah, there we have, like, you know, once we understand that, you know, our reality is so much based in reversals, then we can understand exactly how the patriarchs, patriarchs have taken over specifically. Um, she also shows, like, how they basically destroyed the divinity of women through the, their destruction of goddess and their complete, like, um destruction of her body even um so that we now are in a situation where we end up in at least american culture with protestant christianity uh where the female aspect of divinity is completely taken out of the equation altogether she does not exist and if the female is not divine right in our own minds if we subconsciously or even consciously believe that we have we are not divine, and thus we have, and that God is male, specifically, as she, you know, points out, that we cannot really challenge that. We can't challenge his rule. We can't challenge the order that's been set up. Who are we to do that? And you see, this is, you know, why, of course, many fundamentalist Christians in the U.S. are so opposed to feminism, right? They do not... It is not a woman's place to judge God's order because woman has no divinity in her whatsoever and is, in fact, the source of all that is bad. So, yeah, it is what this book does enable you to do is to really free your mind and to, like, really manipulate and warp um your own uh, mental framework so you're able to like more specifically like deal with these things as they're coming at you day after day after day I mean we get these freaking subconscious swaths of patriarchal crap coming at us um, but also you know these beliefs are deeply rooted in us we've all been you know indoctrinated into having them so this is really important to know how to root them out and get them out so that they aren't tripping you up in anything you do. And specifically, like, when it comes to feminism and, like, creating that reality, you need to get rid of those beliefs. You need them to go because they are going to trip you up. Um, and they're going to sabotage whatever women try to create, you know, when we're, like, working on mass, these, like, spells that we're casting to try and liberate us as a, you know, as a cast of people, like, it's very important that we, you know, are not believing that it is the right thing for us to be subjugated. So, um, yeah, that's, I could, that could be a whole video in itself. The other thing she talks about, she specifically talks about, like, how men have used violence against women as a form of blood sacrifice to the patriarchal god, um, or God the Father, you know, as she kind of established in her other books, like, and, um, this is something that happens every time there's, like, a serial killer, um, the way the news reports on it, the way it kind of is glorified and made into, like, a sensation, uh, that is a blood sacrifice. There have been many throughout time that have been done against womankind and are still being done against womankind. 
um, she talks about the mutilation of um, little girls through, like, foot binding or through, like, female genital mutilation. Um, how those were blood sacrifices and, like, specifically about crushing the spirit of little girls. Which is what, I mean, that that's what it is about, specifically. It can be about men's dicks on one level, but when you put a, a woman's body through that kind of torture, that is specifically done to um, traumatize them into subservience because of the pain. Um, so she talks about those phenomena, and she also talks about the witch burnings, and also, like, the burning of widows, uh, sati in India, and also, like, the negative treatment of widows. Um, but yeah, the, the witch burnings is interesting, because she also talks about with that how, um, you know, prior to them, uh, in Europe, women enjoyed a level of freedom that they did not have pro uh, after. And uh, women were business owners, women were a lot more involved in the public sphere. And definitely this was a male assault on female autonomy and female uh, property, specifically. Uh, it was a way for men to consolidate power and to um, create new institutions that would specifically be completely male um, that women were not allowed into. Uh, so yeah, I mean, afterwards, I mean, women lost a great deal of status in Europe, specifically during the quote-unquote age of enlightenment. You know, it was not so for women. They were being, you know, hounded and killed. Um, and there were men killed in the witch trials as well, but what specifically was happening was an assault on womankind. And I think it's definitely taken... Um, I mean, that legacy has really taken um, a toll on the psychology of specifically European descent women that I don't think many are really willing to deal with. I mean, most women, and this is another woman, like, a, a lot of women should be interested in, like, witchcraft and, like, in developing themselves that way because that is our history. It is, it, it's, it's our history. It's, it's a part of who we are specifically, like... Um, but there's such, um, like this level of ancestral fear, I suppose, that, um, really binds us, you know, that needs to be confronted and dealt with. She does that. She also talks about these experiences that exist, um, outside of men's time and space. And I don't really have words for those because, you know... I have a friend who, like, posted about Mishfest on Facebook the other day. She didn't have any words to really describe the experiences she had there because it exists. It's like, it's like those, uh, how do I put this? It's one of those experiences when you are experiencing, um, When you're experiencing, like, traveling into the background where, like, women are at and where we're not bound by, like, male constructs and male um, ideologies and, like, male um, impositions like time and, and space and, and all of that, like, and those of us who have bothered to try and have, like, these experiences um, will know what I'm talking about. Like, there aren't really words to describe them, you know? Um, so much male language cannot describe the female experience completely. So she talks about getting there. She talks about the third passage where we exist, <coughs> sorry, where we exist, like, completely free from all of that. And she definitely made it. And I know other women can and have, and I know women who've, like, talked about entering it, you know, themselves, and, like, it's, it's definitely, um, a space to deal, like, to be in, like, um, but there is no way to really catalog it. So, yeah, this book, even though it may not be the most radical or more, most, like, in-depth analysis of, like, everything that goes on, in terms of its transformative power in the hand of an individual who gets it, there, there's no comparison 
like there's nothing out there like it that will help someone the way this this book has you know there's no book that will help a woman to really confront and deal with like what's been done to her like this book can like it's very powerful so yeah again you have to read this book if you haven't read it I hope I you know <laughs> didn't freak you out too much because I mean to me it's like really exciting when I first read this book the first time I was not spiritual at all but I definitely like felt it working on me and I, it definitely like tr transformed me so I, I really want to put out there that this book needs to be dealt with um, and you need to learn from it how to like use language and manipulate it and to not be a slave to it or slave to any you know of these Saturnian kind of like patriarchal constructs like she shows us that we can like they've set up the rules and the games but we can totally challenge them and we can exist outside of them we don't need them and she also teaches you how to like reclaim like female archetypes that have been like sullied and destroyed you know and and shifted by men you know to mean things that they don't actually mean um very very important to read this book